Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to the top three on Blab. I'm Lynn Bardowski, founder at Million Dollar Party Girl, where I teach direct sellers who are frustrated how to make more money doing what they love. And I'm teaming up with an amazing woman I actually met. I was just figuring it out today, um, April. It's been about a, over like a, a year and a half. Yeah, almost. It's been a year and a half. You're right. Yeah. So and I love your Twitter handle, April in the zone, which is a great play of uh, on your last name, which uh, now you have to pronounce it for me because Lord knows I'm going to mess it up. It's a long one. Iana zone. April Iana zone. There's a lot of N's and A's and O's. That's all I know. <laughs> and in the hot seat with us is Tia Johnson. Hey, Tia. Hello. <laughs> Tia's also another amazing woman entrepreneur. We actually met. Uh, Thanks to hashtags, yeah. right? <laughs> yes. The power, power of social media. We met because of a hashtag mm -hmm. and um, connected at when I spoke at the Pennsylvania Conference for Women. She's come to my boot camps. We just have a lot of fun going on. And and uh, Tia has a book coming out. Wow. Any day. <laughs> Any day book coming cool. out. So make sure you follow her. So April, how have you been? Of course, you you live in sunny Florida. We're waiting for the next snow apocalypse, apparently, <laughs> is coming my way. Uh, yeah. I've been waiting for it to get cold here all winter long, and it's only been cold the last few days. And when I say cold, it's like 64. So it's beautiful here. I hate to tell you. <laughs> we do not feel sorry for you. We don't feel sorry at all. Yeah, they're like, it could be one inch, it could be two feet. We don't know what you're getting. So, you know, typical. Okay. Um, so we're talking about six figure success. Um, you know, my background, I made a six figure income for the last 23 years. And, and, um, we actually connected because I saw you had this amazing conference you were, you were putting on in Florida with over, I think there was well over 300 attendees. Yeah, and you sold out of your books at that conference because you were so amazing on stage. Oh, and thank you. Yeah, so I was like, oh, I need to get to that conference. It just sounds so amazing. And um, so I think a lot, a big part of really both our messages is to really tune in, listen to your gut, follow mm -hmm. your heart a little bit, um, and make those smart decisions that are really going to connect you with more like-minded people. Absolutely. That, that's mm -hmm. what lifts you higher. So we're talking about the top three tips to sell out your programs. And I know that um, you were, I know you talked a lot about, you know, I think as women, we were afraid to ask for more money. Yeah. Right? So my whole brand, everything about what I do is self-made success. And it used to be sexy self-made success, which was the conference that you went to. And it's not about how you look and feel. It's about, or I'm sorry, it's not about how you look, but it's more of your confidence um, that you're able to charge what you're worth. Um, and the self-made is that you never have to depend on anybody else and you could generate your own income at any point in time. And it's so important for me be, to share this because I have two daughters who I want to be a role model for. And I went from, you know, uh, begging my ex-husband to stay with me in a bad situation because I was afraid of the money. So I know for your audience and for what you do, we all want the, to empower the women to know, not just feel great, but be able to support themselves. So they, it's so important uh, to do this blab today. Thank you for having me. No, I'm, a, I'm excited about it. Thank you for saying yes. Yeah. And, and you know, what's really... Uh, kind of sad is the latest statistics show, because I do like to follow the numbers, that the average woman entrepreneur is making about $30,000 a year. And, and that's before taxes and uh, fees and everything. Yeah, I mean, it, it's probably break even once you consider your business expenses and everything else. So, um, so your subject tonight is a really big game changer because there's so many women that love what they do. They're super passionate about it but they just don't know how to kick it up to get it to that next level where they're not working 80 hours a week, you know, mm -hmm. to get like the scraps at the table. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And you know, you probably see it all the time too, is that we see people a year ago and they're in the same spot they were last year. Um, and they have some great products and everything, but they can't get them out and get enough people to see them. So 
we're going to be talking about three ways to sell out your services tonight, uh, this this year, or yeah. sell out in general. <laughs> I love that selling out of anything awesome. you know, is really excellent. So let's let's dig in because we only have thirty minutes, and I do want to open it up for a little Q and A at the end if Perfect. we have time. Um, so everybody talks about building your list, building your list, building your list. Um, so that might be one of your three topics. So where where do we start? You know. Well, I don't want to get into growing, uh, building your list, because obviously we all need to know that. And I talk about that all the time and, until I'm blue in the face. So first, I want to talk about three biggest mistakes entrepreneurs make when launching, which causes them not to sell out. Mm. So and, and we're just going to go through them really quick so we can get focused on the good stuff. OK, I'm taking uh, notes. <laughs> Number one is that they don't have a warm audience. So they created this amazing product. They're filling this great need, but they don't have people ready and able to buy from them or even uh, remotely interested in what they have. So they don't have a warm audience and they just launch a product uh, into the marketplace or into the world. And anything we talk about tonight can be used towards products, services, programs. It can be used for brick and mortar. So when I say launch, maybe it's opening your door for, for a brick and mortar. So you okay. don't have a warm audience. It could be your first mistake. And, and even this applies to direct sellers because, you know, Absolutely. you know, that's the business that I built. And same thing. You know, I talk about that all the time is how are you how are you going to get out of that inner circle of people that are just saying yes, because they were obligated. Exactly. Yes. Um, absolutely works perfectly for direct sales. Now, this also too. Um, number two is that they don't or I'm sorry, that they think they could sell ever, or that they think they can get the word out on their own. And I was one of those people at the very beginning. I'm like, I could promote everything by myself. I could fill the rooms by myself. Um, I don't need partners. I don't need affiliates and that type of thing. So you can't, you can't get the word out to millions of people by yourself. So um, that was number two. And number three they don't have an actual plan. So they have a plan to launch or to sign up for a direct sales company or to open their front doors, but they don't have a pre-plan on how they're going to get the warm audience. They don't have a plan of what happens after they open the door and then a follow-up procedure. So you need to have a really good plan. So those are the three mistakes that I see people making all the time. And then they're disappointed when they don't get the sales or they don't get the new recruits. Um, but they're really setting themselves up for failure almost right off the because bat. it was because it was such a great idea. Yeah. Right? It's like, but I know it's so great. It's really the opposite of if you build it, they will come. They won't come. You have to market it. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm one of those people and I, I see Tina's on the, the blab right now, but I'm one of those people that just get it out there. Don't worry about the mistakes, launch it. But you, and you still need to do that, but you have to have the structure and the plan and not worry about the spelling mistakes. Tina, she's my, my grammar corrector. Um, so those are the three mistakes. And now if it's okay with you, I want to get into the three strategies uh, to yeah. sell your services. Yeah, because I think a lot of people can relate to that. We, especially as women, we're so passionate when we come up with some amazing idea. We're just full steam ahead without ever taking the time to do the marketing behind it. Absolutely. So the first way that I sell out my services and get the butts in the seats if you are doing a workshop or an event is you have to have joint ventures or affiliate partners. Now, there's two different ways to do this. Um, Number one is if it's somebody that, well, I'm assuming that people know on this call that they have to have their target avatar, their ideal client. They need to know that one person that they're always speaking to in their marketing. So that one ideal participant for their program, that one ideal attendee. Um, we're not going to get into all that, but have that in mind as we're, as we're talking tonight. So the first thing is that you need to find people that have the same exact target market as you that complement what you do. And they need to have a big reach. So for instance, I'm a business coach. Who are my ideal joint venture partners or affiliates? They could be um, a website designer. They could be a video marketing manager. 
They could be someone that teaches social media because they all have the same target market that you and I do. So they could possibly send something to their list or send something to their social media audience. And in return, I could either give them a commission or if it's someone that um, my list could also benefit from, which usually it is, I could send something to my list. So it could just be an even exchange and an even promotion. And then on the flip side, you can offer a commission as well. But that's one of the ways that I really make sure that it's not just my, my little list on my own. That's the way I work with international clients is really by reaching out to other people's audiences. Does that make Lever sense? Leverage somebody else's list. Absolutely. Yeah, I totally, I get it and I do it. <laughs> I love it. And you are probably experienced and have like a whole referral program and maybe an affiliate program. Most people don't think that far ahead when they're launching. Um, and it's really important. There's so many inexpensive ways where you can track all the links. Um, I love Entreport, which is what I use. But when you're first starting out, you can use some simple uh, Eventbrite affiliate program, which is free. Um, you, there's a, affiliate plugins for WordPress sites. So that way everything could be tracked and you can know where the leads are coming from. So you know, not only if you're going to pay them, let's say you don't pay them, but you know who to reach out to again in the future. Um, you know who you should promote because they are doing a good job promoting you. So that's one way. And another great way for affiliates is if you had a program um, and they loved, your participants loved it, right before the program wraps up, you start getting them primed to promote your next program for you. So I know you love this program. You had such a great experience. Do you know somebody else that would like it? And you can get a discount on a future program or um, I will, you know, you can make a certain commission on that program. I'm sorry, I can't read and talk at the same time, so I'm not following the questions. That's okay, I'm following, I'm talking to the people in the chat for you. Okay, perfect. Um, so affiliates and joint venture partners are huge. And the biggest thing that people ask me when I, when I do this type of training, who is my joint venture partner? Or I don't know how to reach out to people. Guys, it's a numbers game because a lot of people are going to turn you down. Just follow them. On, don't reach out to people that you, your brand or your personality and your values don't align with. You have to trust them enough to represent your brand almost. So you have to do a little bit of research. You have to learn about them. And you have to make sure it's a good fit. But there's millions of people to reach out to. Um, it's a numbers game, you know, find some and, uh, ask, invite them and go back and forth. So the number two way to sell out your programs, your services, your products is kind of what we're doing right now is teach. This is such an underutilized, uh, tactic or strategy really to sell out your services. So if you're delivering amazing content that has a topic, first you got to get people to tune in or sign up for a free webinar, sign up for a, a free workshop. It has to be a very targeted topic to your audience. And then they come into your, your network, they come into your teaching, and they love what you're telling them, and they know that you're delivering some amazing content and it's not fluff. They're waiting and they can't wait for you to launch something. So I'm going to backtrack a little bit. So before you even know what you're going to launch, you could be building this amazing warm list and you don't have to sell them something right off the bat. They're going to start like drooling, waiting for you to, to make them an offer eventually. Like, how could I work with you, April? Because you're delivering such great content. It's, um, almost, like, it's almost like having your own focus group. On really seeing when, when you teach, you really see what resonates. Yes, absolutely. And I see Amy just asked, are you still finding webinars valuable? I'm seeing conversion rates dropping. So I personally am still finding webinars um, valuable. However, I'm doing something a little bit different. Um, not, not different. It's not new to the marketplace, but it's something a little bit different for my programs. I found, or in general, if you're selling something more than $2,000, people need to talk to you. They need to 
make sure you're a real person. They need to have that extra touch, not just on a webinar. So instead of trying to sell something at the end of a webinar, you should offer a, a strategy session, a discovery call, a consultation, a way for them to either grow their business, find out more about their health, find out you know whatever it is that you're offering, but a way for them to get in touch with you and schedule an appointment so you can get them on the phone or you can get them to somehow in front of them again. So for me, that works really well. And uh, when I sell my 12-month mastermind, that's the exact way that I, for the most part, fill it. And it's a free training. I have affiliates promote my free training because they know their list is going to get great value. They're not directly selling to their list. They're offering their list some great value, which most people want to do because they run out of things to say to their, <laughs> their list eventually. You know? Yeah. So they're giving them. You can't always sell, you know, you have to, you can't always be having something when there's a buy on the back end. You just have to have things where it's like no strings attached. Just go to April and talk to her and she'll hook you up. Yeah. So if they promote it to the webinar and eventually that turns into a sale, they do get commission. And Amy asked, so you're not doing uh, straight to product webinars. For the most part, I'm not. Um, I do once in a while still do them, but it's for like a $497 product or $297. Um, what I, and I don't have anything really in between a high end and, and a lower passive income product right now. So for me, uh, the webinars still really work well. Um, and also ever webinars selling or promoting to the free session is working well for me. Um, I hope that answered that question. The third thing, or I'm sorry, back to the teaching. So the webinars are a great way. Um, you don't have to do a free teaching. You could also do a low end or an entry level to get them in. So I do a lot of workshops locally. They're $27 or if there's lunch included, it's $47, but it's a low end. And the main thing is, and I know you are so good at this, Lynn, is deliver amazing content. Let them receive what they're coming for and not feel like it's just a sales pitch because you will never get anywhere with that. It used to work a few years ago, but now it's too, the people are too smart and there's so much great value out there for free that you know, they don't, they don't want to like, feel like they're duped or they wasted a whole afternoon. Yeah, I think I think there's a little bit of blood, bad blood in that arena where people have gone to things and it's been a whole sell and they've been disenchanted. So yeah. that ship has sailed a little bit. Exactly. So I love the live events. I love the webinars. Um, what I did also find well, uh, that's working really well for me is not just a slides webinar. People want to see, I mean, it could be pre-recorded, but they want to see the real connection. They want to see you. Um, so that, that works really well for me as well. The third thing that I really do to sell out my services is build a list, but really have a launch structure. So, oh, do I have one I can show you? No. But you know, I, I used to have it on the paper where I could hold it up. What I do is go to lucidchart.com, or I think there's something like bobble or something like that.com that you can do it for free. I pay $10 a month um, where you can put, like it's a mind map thing or a flow chart. So I put what actually happens in my launch. So first my list gets sent out, then um, the affiliates send it out. But then if somebody clicks on a certain thing in my email sequence, they get moved to a different part. If they attend a webinar, they get moved to a different part. So it, there's really a whole flow. It used to be, and I used to teach my, uh, my clients this a long time ago too, is do a webinar, have a three email follow-up sequence, and that's kind of it. Doesn't work anymore. So for every launch, you really need at least 20, um, usually even 40 emails that go in all different directions. So have an actual follow-up system. Um, 
And I know you help your clients with that as well. That's something that I work on with my clients. It doesn't have to be that elaborate, but if you want to sell out your services, you need to have a plan. And of course, follow up is key. And I could talk about that until I'm blue in the face. Most people do not follow up. They follow up after two or three times and then they drop the ball. Yeah, I think that I think the the research is it takes eight contacts. So actually, it might even be up to twelve <laughs> before you finally get to that end decision. It used to be seven to twelve. Like when I was in corporate sales, it was seven to twelve. Now, with the overwhelm and the overload on emails and um, social media, all of that stuff, it's actually like almost twenty four touches at this point. And when I say touches, it's an email or. Um, you skip a few steps when you actually get on the phone with somebody, but yeah. 24 touches in general is, is a good, uh, a good map. Wow. So quick question. Cause everyone might be wondering this when you're on the phone. So you're doing your free consult. Is it a 15 minute? Is it a 30 minute? Cause this is a lot of one-on-one -on -one time. Yeah. How much time are you dedicating to that? So in general, uh, my strategy sessions are usually about 30 minutes. When I do a webinar and I know that I'm going to have a lot of people sign up um, for sessions, I block off um, like two or three days and I schedule them 20 minutes apart because you will get a lot of people. And I know a lot. Um, most people say that they waste time. You know, there's so many people that don't have money or there's just people that signed up that they can't help. So you will have that but it is a numbers game. You do get on the phone with most people. And a lot of it is really having the right strategy on the phone call. So you're delivering, again, you're giving them at least one great strategy that they could use. Um, but you want to get on the phone and you want to say right off the bat, the purpose of today's call, I'm going to give you what I say. You can take my script. <laughs> the purpose of today's call is so I can find out more about you, about your business, and I want to give you at least one great strategy from this call that you could use to grow your business. And after that, if, it, if we both feel it's a good fit, I'm going to tell you how we could work together. Does that sound good to you? And nobody ever says no, but at this point, you're getting them to buy into the conversation already. They're, they're saying yes, and they're not shocked at the end when you offer them something. And obviously, you don't want to offer people the product if it's not a good fit. Um, but that's you're letting them know up front you find out about them you find out their pain points and you have a structure that kind of rolls off your tongue after you do it enough times after the the third call exactly you're a pro practice makes perfect and lynn you know this i'm uh and i'm sure you tell your people ask for the sale so many people have great sessions or great webinars or you know they're in front of a room and they don't ask for the sale like people would usually say yes if it, they just put the offer on the table and most people walk away and don't don't ask yeah absolutely and people are not going to raise their hand and say you know pick me i've even had uh you know especially in my direct sales world where we are asking for the booking asking for the party yeah. and i've had people fill out you know customer forms where they say no and I'll say, oh, you know, I didn't get a chance to ask you. I want to help you get that product you want. Would you like to have me over? And they'll they'll actually say to me, oh, yeah, I wrote no, but I do want to have that party. Exactly. <laughs> like, Thank God I didn't pay attention to that. And you just um, brought up one other point because it could work both ways. So if you don't give them that little paper as well, like if I speak in front of a room, I'm always handing out something. Even if you're not allowed to sell, you're always handing out something for them to fill out because that little quiet person in the back of the room is not going to wait around for you to get off stage or to end the workshop to ask you a question. But they will write it on the paper or they will, you know, check off the box. Yes, I want to have a party. So it works both ways. Um, and, and I would make sure you're definitely doing both. Yeah, that's a great question. It's easy for people to fill out a quick little form and be comfortable with it. Not everybody's going to be the extrovert that runs up to you. Exactly. Um, 
I don't I don't know how much time we have. I don't know if you want to get into Q and A or do you want me to um, keep going? I know. I could keep talking. No, no, well, yeah, this, this is really great stuff. I literally am taking notes. I'm kind of like, okay, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> I'm like, check, I did that, check, I did that. Um, so anything before we open it up to Q&A uh, that you feel, you know, we need to, we need to share? Yes. Um, so I'm trying to think offhand. Um, I wrote it down a couple notes before we got on. I just... Think just the script was great, you know, to have that little nugget of setting that expectation in the beginning of, you know, I'm excited to to give you one great strategy and then I'm going to share how I can work, how we can work together. Yeah. And that was a great nugget. The other thing is have like your script written out and practice it. I know it's stupid, but I, I do it in the mirror. I practice it until it rolls off your tongue. And I, even with my clients, if I'm trying to talk about their script, just because I'm so used to saying mine, it'll always go into business owners. So you want it to become second nature and know that you're coming from a place of serving and that you need to help them with their, their problem. You are the solution and you're doing them a disservice if you're not telling them how you could help them. Get the uh, pushy thing out of your head, ladies. <laughs> I do have one last tip. Uh, I know for me, when I first started, or, and especially if you're trying to recruit somebody in a direct sales market, you can get on the phone and the phone call could be great, really awesome. And then they're going to say, you know what, send me an email, send me some more information. And then you have to sit down and actually figure out what to say, even though you know what to say, but it's actually the point of getting back on the computer, filling out everything. So again, I, always, I have a system and a structure for everything. I have an email template that I use, and it's not um, it's not cold. It's very warm, but I just change it for each client. I don't change their name. I actually change the information, but it's a whole template or kind of a proposal, I guess, and it's set up ready to go. So I just change out their exact information, their exact needs, and exactly how I can help them, and it takes me two minutes instead of putting it off because it's going to normally take me 20 minutes. So this is already saved in a file. They say send me more information and it's like copy paste. And and again, change out their specific information. So, but for the most part, the template's there. And I see Tia just said she just went through that. Was that sitting through uh, and trying to decide on what you're gonna say back in the email? Yeah. So if you- <laughs> That could take two hours. <laughs> and you would just put it off. So do it once and have the basics and that will help you a lot. And that's just great for follow-up because people are excited when they get off the phone with you. And then if they don't hear from you, you know, hours go by and then they start talking to other people and getting their advice. And exactly. many times the advice is not to do what they were excited about doing. So Most they need the time. They need, yeah, right? So you need to get in their head as soon as you possibly can when they're excited. Mm -hmm. T is saying she will apply it. All right, let's open it up to Q&A. Uh, we do have two seats open. If anybody wants to hop in and talk to April live, you're welcome to do that um, or ask questions in the chat. She is a six-figure income success expert, has built multiple businesses. Like many women, April, you were not just one thing. <laughs> no, I have I have three different businesses in three different areas. So, and I work with clients all over um, that do completely different things. So, it really is about having the system and the structure to apply to any business. And then you just rinse and repeat. Yes, I mean you change it up a little depending on the field, but for the most part, it's rinse and repeat. And that's also how you create the passive uh, income streams which is what I think every, in general, each woman or everybody should have at least, I would say six or seven different income streams. Um, so if you need to take off a month from work, if say you have a family emergency, your business is still gonna run, be running behind the scenes, you're still gonna have those checks coming in. And direct sales is a great passive income source once you get it up and running and you get a team built. So. I know you help your clients with that all the time, but there's so many other ways as well. 
Yeah, maybe we could do a quick little list here. Um, I think that would be a, a you know great value. Some of the different revenue streams, obviously direct sales business, especially if it is um, in line with your branding. For example, I'll have you know a yoga instructor sell our uh, natural essential oil candles. Yes, or a Zumba teacher. You know that's a great way uh, to have extra income to sell to people that they're already are their customers and offer them more products and services. Absolutely. And of course, a book is a great extra revenue stream. Mm -hmm. And the ways that really work for me are businesses that complement mine that either I have currently or am currently using or have used and loved. So I will never recommend or try to sell or make commission on a product that I have not personally used. So for instance, I don't use Aweber, which is an email marketing system, but I did use it for years. So it's a great entry level uh, email marketing system and I recommend it to my clients, but I make a commission on every time they sign up and they know I'm getting an affiliate commission. They're gonna pay the same whether they sign up on their own or they sign up through my link. So that's a monthly check that I get all the time or every month. And Entreport is the email system that I use now and I completely love. And sorry, Lynn, but I'm getting an affiliate commission from you for Entreport because you I signed know. up at my conference. So I'm your every, customer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so every month I get a nice check uh, from Entreport. But these are services that I love and that I stand behind and I trust and they're great companies. Um, so that's really important. You want to make sure they align with your brand and make sure they align with your values but that's passive income so no matter what as long as i mean if somebody decides they don't want to use it anymore then i don't get that commission but i don't have to do anything for that money yeah, yeah. you're getting paid to recommend things which we do all the time we're always selling exactly. over to buy things and i i think probably one of the most underused affiliate marketing uh resources is amazon so yeah. that's something you could go create an amazon affiliate account and you can buy almost anything on Amazon. And so you love even a book. Yeah. You love something, you recommend it, you can actually get paid for that. And if you have, I know you blog a lot, but if you have a blog, that's an easy uh, place to put a link. What I love though is having that monthly recurring income. So I would look for passive income sources, uh, recurring income sources like that. And they're in every field. We're, I'm just talking about business because I'm a business coach, but they're in every field. Whether you're a health coach and you go to GNC, they might have an affiliate link for their, um, their website that you earn a certain commission if you send. I know Vitamin Shop does, I don't know about GNC. Um, but different things like that. So whatever field you are in, I want you to do something. I want you to write down a list of 10 people that complement what you do, big names, 10 businesses that complement what you do. And you're going to use these for your JV and affiliates to promote your products. And you're also going to use them to possibly have a, um, an affiliate income coming in or a passive income coming in. That is just brilliant. I think it is probably one of the most underused or not really thought of sources of income. Love it. So really target membership programs. So it's coming in every single month, not just one and done. Absolutely. So smart. So smart. So um, I do want to give a shout out to our photographer who is our sponsor. I'm going to pop her link in there. She oh, shot. No, sorry. She shot my fabulous photo shot. We'll get. We'll give a shout out to Tina too, who's also your photographer. <laughs> sorry. And uh, who's yours, okay. Dana? Yeah, her name is Donna Romano Photography. She is a sponsor of the show. She did our whole branding shot, which is the cover, you know, when you go to the blub or cover shot. It's gorgeous. Um, I love it. With the we had so much fun. Little outside photo shoot. So make sure you stop by her website, say hello. And so April, um, I know, I think you have some uh, free gifts on your website, right? I do. And I would love to have a get sold out strategy session with you guys. So if you go to my website, which I will put it in the chat box right now, and you go down to work with April and it says a complimentary strategy session. 
Um, let me just make sure I spelled my name right. <laughs> I've, I've got your website open if you want me to pop the link in. Yeah, if you could, that would be great. Okay. If you click there, don't worry. Oh, there it is. I am going to make sure you get a strategy. I'm not going to just try to sell you a product or a service. So I would love to talk to you guys and figure out a strategy for you to get sold out in 2016. We love it. Tia, that would be perfect for you. Tia's launching a book, so she's got a lot going on. Awesome, Tia. Congratulations. I'm just checking in the chat. Well, thank you so much. This was a lot of fun, a uh, lot of juicy nuggets. I hope people were taking notes because you just, even just like I said, even just that initial script you can use for so many, that's just a good sales script, no matter what, no matter what you get going on. Um, you know, let's see how we can work together. That can apply to so many things. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. This was really fun. Thank you for having me. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night. And Lynn, congratulations on all your success. You've been amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's always, a, it's always fun. All right. I'm going to...